Okay, so um, little disclaimer first. Let me close out of this. I have too many boxes open on my computer. Um, yes, little disclaimer. Okay, so uh, these webinar sessions are hosted uh, by myself. My name is Rachel Lindberg. I am a Master's of Counseling Psychology practicum student and Ashley McLeaf, who is also logged in right now. She is a master, Master's of Social Work field work student. Um, we are both supervised by Mark Green. He is a licensed professional counselor and the director of Angelo State's Counseling Services. Uh, these webinar sessions are meant to be informational and psychoeducational. They're not intended to be used as psychotherapeutic treatment. But should you feel any psychological or emotional discomfort uh, while we're doing these sessions, you can call Angelo State's Counseling Services um, at 325-942-2371 to see if you're eligible to set up an appointment um, to see a counselor and do an intake, um, or if you need immediate assistance, like right then and there, then you can call the Crisis Helpline, and that phone number is 325-486-6345, and um, that's available 24-7. So just real quick before we jump, into the topic, um, I'll look, go ahead and let Ashley introduce herself. Hi, I'm Ashley McLeaf. I am a, a social work advanced standing graduate field student. Um, I conduct intake assessments and provide case management uh, services to students at the counseling center. Um, that includes like helping uh, students find any like resources they might need and um, on or off campus. And then after graduation, I'm going to seek licensure as a licensed master social worker. And then uh, just a little fun fact about me is I listen to a ton of podcasts. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I do to uh, decompress and de-stress is I like to listen to some podcasts. <laughs> Awesome. Um, like I said earlier, I'm a practicum student through the Counseling Psychology graduate program. Um, I do intake assessments and I can provide individual couples and group counseling. Um, after I graduate, I'm going to seek licensure as a licensed professional counselor intern. That's kind of the first step to becoming a fully licensed uh, professional counselor. Um, so that's what I'll be doing. And then uh, for my fun fact, I put that I share a birthday with one of my dogs and then Something that I like to do for stress and to decompress is walk my dogs. Um, we play with them a lot outside as long as it's not hot and rainy. <laughs> so um, we can go ahead and move on. So this webinar is over anxiety and stress management. We covered this topic back um, back in, let's see, maybe after spring break um, in April, actually, maybe. Um, and we wanted to cover it again because it's such an important topic. This is something that can be um, talked about and looked at um, as often as needed um, just because it's so very important. And, you know, each time we have different people log on. So some of y'all probably haven't heard any of this information yet. So oops, I need to move this box again. <laughs> All right. So um, first I wanted to cover the differences between anxiety and stress. Um, People like to use those terms interchangeably, and while they are related, they're not interchangeable. They are different phenomena, different things, wherever you want to call it. So anxiety tends to be a response to an internal experience, and it's often related to events occurring in the future. So from anxiety, we often get emotions like worry, apprehension, and fear, and it has to do, um, anxiety is very future related. So it's worrying about what we have to do um, at work tomorrow, being apprehensive about starting at a new school, things like that. So while we can feel anxiousness as an emotion, it can, if it um, meets the certain diagnostic criteria, it can escalate into a diagnosable mental health and disorder. So that would be an anxiety related disorder. Um, some of those uh, disorders can be um, panic attack disorder, uh, phobias, and it interferes with your daily functioning. It prevents you from going to work, from turning in your school assignments. It affects your relationship with your friends, your family, your significant other. 
And on the other hand, we have stress. So stress is a response to an external cause. So there is something, a situation, an event, a setting that um, makes us stressed. So um, stress is the external event and be like the internal response um, dealing with the future aspect of that event. So um, some of those external causes can be work, school, family life, relationships, and yet can trigger anxiety. And stress tends to be more manageable in day-to-day -day life. And that's usually what we experience before it escalates into anxiety. So one way to think about it is that stress tends to be more mild, more, more manageable. And anxiety is more of a severe, can be severe uh, of a response that um, might need outside intervention, such as um, seeing a licensed mental health professional. So uh, some common symptoms of anxiety and stress. So we don't only experience these as, um, you know, physical or emotional. It's usually both. Um, usually it affects us physically and emotionally. So um, just to keep in mind, stress kind of tends to have less of these. So while anxiety might include um, more of these, stress might be like, oh, just like a stress headache, but you're feeling fine, like emotionally. Um, so it's a little bit more on the, on the mild side. So some physical symptoms include headaches, muscle aches, gastrointestinal problems, um, so your stomach being upset, sleep disturb disturbance, um, your hands sweating, your armpits sweating, um, an increase in heart rate and blood pressure, feeling low energy, um, having fatigue, so wanting to stay in bed, being kind of sleepy, not wanting to get up, um, an exaggerated startle response, so being really jumpy. You know, um, even if you see somebody coming around the corner, you might still kind of kind of jump um, when you when they come around, and then restlessness. Um, you know, some of these might seem like at conflict with each other, you know, how can you have low energy and be restless? You know, um, that's why it's important to kind of be aware of the different symptoms because it can differ from person to person. Um, so some emotional symptoms, um, those can include feelings of being overwhelmed, apprehension, worried, uh, feeling keyed up or on edge, irritability, difficulty concentrating and having racing thoughts. So, um, we experience anxiety, you know, we're going to have like multiple of these symptoms. We might, um, our stomach might be upset and our heart rate's going pretty quick. So we're breathing maybe a little harder than usual or a little restless. We're on edge. We might be irritable. Somebody taps us on the shoulder. We're going to jump and get mad at them. So um, those are just some ways that it might affect us. So anxiety is, can be distinguishable from stress when it causes clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other areas of functioning. So this is really what determines the difference between being stressed and having anxiety. You can see a mental health practitioner for, for both, but in order for an anxiety disorder to be diagnosed, um, it needs to cause the impairment in these areas. Um, so social, you know, friends, family, relationships, those kinds of things, occupational work, and, um, you know, with school, uh, might be a lot about um, your academics or being able to attend extracurriculars and things like that. So, like I just said, you know, there's specific criteria that has to be met. So, not just the clinically significant distress, but there are certain symptoms that have to be displayed at a certain frequency in a certain amount of time um, before that licensed mental health clinician can diagnose it as an anxiety disorder. And I just really wanted to emphasize again that these terms are not interchangeable, but they can be interrelated. Um, you can have stress without anxiety, um, but stress usually precedes anxiety. So um, they're very, very related to each other. So um, some strategies, so obviously COVID-19 going on right now, been going on since we did the very first webinar back in April. Um, but we really wanted to just cover it again because it's still an ongoing issue. It's going to be an ongoing issue. Um, and we are more aware of that now. So some um, just suggestions for like how to manage 
stress and anxiousness related to the virus are uh, limit the time you spend reading and watching the news, including social media. Some people don't think of social media as a news source, but so many things get shared on there, whether it's factual or not. Um, and then reading about it, being bombarded with it for 10 hours a day and just leaving the TV on, that's not what we would call a healthy coping mechanism. And it could make us more stressed than we need to be. So also, um, when you are looking at the news or research um, or reading social media, make sure you focus on evidence-based factual research. I know there's been a lot of debate right now about um, what's true and what's not. There's conspiracy theories out there about um, things that the government has said, the CDC has said, what local governments, you know, cities and counties have said. Um, so just make sure you check your sources, make sure you check where they got their information from. Um, see if there's, you know, when we're in college, we learned how to do MLA and, um, or APA. I've only done APA since I've gotten to, to college. Um, citations, look at those and um, look up what you're, what you're reading and um, use fact checkers um, to see what's true and what's not. Um, I know that they're starting to lift up some of the um, sanctions of, you know, being able to go back to restaurants and um, gyms and things like that, but social distancing is still an issue. So um, one way to combat that is you can prevent isolation by video chatting um, with your friends, families, and coworkers. Um, just because we are working from home or staying six feet apart doesn't mean that we can't call them up on the phone and just have a conversation. It doesn't even need to be work-related. Um, just it'd be a chance to connect. Um, so another big thing is integrating self-care. Um, some people think self-care is a lot of like hooey wooey, you know, like it's just a thing that we throw out there as an excuse to go take a bubble bath. That's really not the only thing that self-care is. Um, self-care can be a lot of things, taking care of your finances, setting a schedule, making sure you're getting your work done on time. Um, learning how to communicate assertively so you can reduce um, tension at work, those kinds of things. So if we can integrate those activities with healthy coping strategies, which we're gonna talk a little, a little bit more about later um, into our daily life, then we can reduce our stress and our anxiety. Um, another big thing, this is a really big thing for me personally, I'm a little biased about this, but um, you need to understand that everyone responds differently. So try to be understanding and just kind, be nice, be kind when dealing with other people, especially those people who have been on the front lines working to keep us safe. So, um, you know, grocery store workers, healthcare workers, um, people at their restaurants, uh, delivery drivers, just be nice, be nice dealing when dealing with people. You don't know what they're going through and they don't know what you're going through. Um, you know, sometimes it would be so nice and easy to just fire back with, you know, a challenging comment. Um, but overall, you know, if we're just nice, maybe they'll be nice back. <laughs> so being understanding is just really, really huge right now. Um, also practice safe hygiene, follow the CDC guidelines um, with washing your hands, staying six feet apart, um, wearing a mask. I know there's a lot of debate about whether you should wear a mask or not, but that's what's recommended right now. And if anything, um, it helps you protect other people. Um, you know, it helps keeps our vapors and everything that comes out of our mouths and our noses, um, keeps it all in. I know I'm not wearing a mask right now, but that's because I'm all alone in this room. There's nobody here with me. Um, and you know, my hands, I got hand sanitizer everywhere. So, um, you know, just, just be clean, <laughs> be a clean person. You know, we're all adults. So, um, this should be kind of like self-explanatory right now. And then also, um, limiting unhealthy habits. So a minute ago, I mentioned healthy coping strategies. There are also unhealthy coping strategies. So some unhealthy habits might be, um, overeating junk food, excessively drinking alcohol or using, um, illicit drugs. So while it's okay to, you know, have a treat every once in a while, you know, moderation is a big, big deal. And the things that we eat and put in our bodies, those can also affect our mood. And, um, you know, for example, um, for anxiety and caffeine is not good. Um, caffeine can actually increase uh, anxiousness. 
and um, stomach upset. So drinking a lot of caffeinated sodas, coffees, teas, um, that might be something that you might want to consider limiting at this time if you're experiencing a lot of anxiety. So um, this is another list. This is from the American Counseling Association. They just put it out this morning on their social media. And I had to type it down real quick. Um, something that they recommend doing for anxiety um, and depression related to the virus is make a list of worries. Um, you know, usually we make a list of goals, but sometimes it's okay to make a list of what you're worried about. Um, but while you're making this list, it's also important to be realistic without thinking of everything as a catastrophe um, and focusing on concrete things that you can change and have some sort of control over. So um, I know it's really difficult to um, maybe not write down things that we don't have any control over, but the point of making this list is brings me to the second one, which is to brainstorm a list of possible solutions. So you can write down anything that might seem like it could help, even if it might not be at like the top of your list of what might work, um, just writing down those possible solutions. That way you can start to problem solve and use your decision-making skills to maybe do something about something you're worried about. Um, just as an example, so um, also be aware of your emotional triggers and how you react to them. You know, um, for me, if I keep reading about like whatever the daily death toll is or how many cases there are in Tom Green County every single day, um, you know, I, I feel sad. That makes me upset. And I know that it makes me feel sad and anxious and I'm not able to sleep. So. One thing I know to do is to put my phone up before I go to bed or not read news headlines. Um, but also keep in mind that some sadness and worry is normal and to be expected. You know, we can't always, ex actually, we can never escape our emotions, even though we try. We try to be numb and go on autopilot, but it doesn't always work that way. So if you just kind of keep in mind that, like, it's okay to be sad, it's okay to be worried. Um, you know, we're definitely, even though this has been going on for a few months, we're still not used to it. This isn't how we've been living our lives for the past, you know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Um, so there are some changes that, that need to be made, but um, at least you will be more aware of what you can and cannot do. So another idea was to conduct a strengths inventory. Um, this is something that I really like. It's a positive, it's an idea from um, the positive psychology aspect of things. So, um, if you can identify what you're good at and things that you enjoy, then you can use those strengths to tackle the problems and the list of worries that um, I talked about a minute ago and incorporate those into your solutions. So um, if you're really good at humor and that's something that you enjoy, you like being funny, then um, you, know, you can use that to uh, maybe take one of your worries and reframe it into something a little bit more positive, a little bit of a silver lining. I know that's easier said than done, and that's for sure <laughs> easier said than done. But once you're more aware of what makes you emotional and um, your strengths and what you can do to tackle it, then um, you'll be more better equipped, better equipped to um, tackle your worries. And then the last thing, which I had already talked about a minute ago, is practice kindness. Um, when we are nice to others and we are helpful and we practice pro-social behavior, we have a better sense of joy, satisfaction, and it enhances our mood. Um, people, individuals who like to help others, um, they tend to be um, less depressed and have less anxiety um, from those behaviors. So those are just um, from the American Counseling Association. And then I will let Ashley take it away from here. All right, awesome. And just to remind you guys, if you have any questions or anything, um, you can feel free to put them in the chat box. Um, okay, so some relaxation techniques that are uh, to kind of combat these feelings of stress and anxiety that we and worry that we might have right now. So relaxation breathing, such as the box method, which is you hold for four, you breathe in for four, you hold for four, and you breathe out for four. So it kind of um, goes in a box or a circle. <laughs> um, different types of like meditations and yoga. Uh, some of that might feel a little 
happy to say meditate and sit with like your hands in your lap, but meditation can be just mindful thinking or just sitting and having a moment to not think about anything. Um, and there are several, several different um, guided meditations on um, different platforms. It's just like the Calm app and um, YouTube and things like that. As well as yoga is a good way to kind of do some soft exercise that's not like a high intensity workout, but it's still exercise. And um, it's a good way to kind of stretch our muscles. Uh, we've all been inside for several months. So a lot of the gyms have been closed and everything. And so yoga practice is a good way to kind of um, do some light exercise um, and then progressive muscle relaxation. And we're also gonna have some um, worksheets on what these mean and how to practice it a little bit later that we're going to go over. But progressive muscle relaxation, this is basically just going either from the top down or the bottom up um, through your whole body and kind of just like tensing your muscles really tight and then letting um, that tension go. And it's a good way to kind of um, relax your whole body. And then different imagery practices. So this is like um, thinking about uh, anything, like thinking about positive things in your life, picturing what your life is going to look like in a year, in two years, um, things like that, of just like creating some positive energy. Some helpful apps, apps for managing anxiety and stress. Calm, I mentioned that a minute ago. Uh, they have guided meditations, different stretching, mindfulness exercises, and relaxing noises and music for sleep. Um, Mind Shift CBT targets anxiety. Headspace is a good app for meditation and stress relief. Uh, Thrive is a game based, targets anxiety and stress prevention. My Life uses mood check physical and emotional, and then suggests meditations and breathing exercises. And there's also several like podcasts, YouTube videos, um, several resources across the internet to um, kind of having tips and um, practices for managing these feelings of anxiety, stress, and worry. So these healthy coping strategies, <laughs> these healthy coping strategies, um, these are, there are so many, <laughs> it's hard to put it in a list, but this is a pretty good list of um, a bunch of different ideas. Uh, this is not an exhaustive list. So anything that kind of brings us like positivity and um, eases the sense of anxiety and worry in a non-harmful way is a kind of a healthy coping strategy. So things like healthy eating, exercise, journaling, spending time with family and friends, even if it's virtually. Um, so uh, some creativity type things of you have downtime, some drawing, painting, writing, or dancing. Um, you need to clean the house, put on a playlist and Dance while you do it. <laughs> uh, different things like reading, taking photos, if you're out for a walk and like yesterday, the sky is all dusty <laughs> and it's uh, brown outside, let's take some pictures of it. Um, there, you can also practice those relaxation te techniques that we kind of talked about of like yoga, mindfulness, meditation, things like that. Uh, rearranging your furniture, kind of change, shaking up, shaking up your uh, your room, your home, um, those kind of th your outdoor space, <laughs> uh, playing a board game, uh, volunteering or donating. Uh, a way to do this uh, in this time where you might not be able to um, 
volunteer your time and like go in and participate at places with uh, certain restrictions. A good way to do this is writing letters to residents at nursing homes or donating to local food banks if you have the means and ability. Um, learning a new skill. Um, I know the whole quarantine everyone has been talking about. Like, what are you going to learn? Everyone's baking bread or um, doing whatever their new skill is, learning how to sew. Um, I would say it's not, don't put too much pressure on yourself that you have to learn something, but it's a good coping strategy to kind of help uh, focus your attention on something positive and um, productive. Uh, maintaining focus and motivation for college courses. Uh, these summer semesters are very short and fast. So um, having that focus is super important for succeeding and thriving in these summer courses. Um, having a backyard picnic. That sounds like a great idea, honestly. <laughs> uh, asking for support from family, friends, professional mental health services. Um, as always, if you are having feelings of anxiety, stress, worry, and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed, you can contact and reach out to the Counseling Center. We are here to help. And then another thing is just playing with and walking with um, your pets. It's a good way to, to bring in. And then uh, the worksheets. So this one, and we're gonna copy the URLs into the chat so you can um, access these as well. Um, so coping skills, this whole goes through some deep breathing exercises. This walks you through the steps of progressive muscle relaxation. So walking through what, which muscles to flex at what time. And then different ways to challenge irrational thoughts and ways to utilize imagery. And then the next worksheet is on grounding techniques. Grounding is really important when working with um, anxiety and anxious thoughts. Um, so grounding can kind of bring you back to the real world, bring you back to what is going on right now. So it's like a five, four, three, two, one rule, five things that you can see, four things that you can feel, three things you can hear, two things you can smell, and then one thing that you can taste. So this is a pretty good, um, step, uh, a good way, an easy tool to kind of bring you back to uh, rational thinking. I like that. <laughs> and then um, different categories of things, and then uh, this kind of helps also name name associations. Um, and then different grounding techniques of like body awareness, um, making sure that both feet are on the floor. So you're physically grounded to the floor, physically grounded, and then bringing your mind back and being mentally grounded. And then this kind of just walks you through all those steps of how to do these processes if you're having these feelings. And then this worksheet kind of goes through healthy and unhealthy coping strategies. So like it looks through the unhealthy of drug or alcohol use and overeating, and then healthy coping of like exercising and healthy eating and um, creating a routine. So, and it goes through examples of different ways to employ these scoping strategies. And then it also goes through 
like a little worksheet of so you can write down what you're specifically going through what you tend to do as an unhealthy coping strategy um and then writing out the consequences of this and then outlining things that you can do that are healthy coping strategies and what the outcome would be of you employing those And this last one is a little worksheet on the introduction to anxiety. So um, what triggers your anxiety? What are um, physical symptoms that you experience when you feel anxious? So this working through could be like, oh, uh, we get anxious when we read the news or look at the death toll. And then physically kind of get an upset stomach. And then thoughts that you have, you're like, oh my gosh, um, we're never gonna get through this or things like that. Um, three thing, and then also it goes through three things on how to cope. So we're also looking at along with the reaction and those anxious feelings, how you can cope with it. A pretty awesome worksheet and it's always nice to kind of write it down put it out there for um so you can look at it and see um kind of what's going on what the writing it out makes it a little bit more concrete so it makes it kind of real this is how i'm feeling this is what i can do right now And then there's also a ton of resources. There's a, we have this awesome little flyer that's been, um, I believe it's been shared everywhere, but um, so there is the National Suicide Prevention Line if you're having thoughts of hurting yourself, um, which is the 800-237-8255, the Trevor Lifeline for LGBT um, Q plus youth, uh, is eight six six four eight eight seven three eight six. Um, the National Sexual Assault Hotline, um, which is one eight hundred six five six four six three or seven three. Sorry, and then the Veterans Crisis Line is eight hundred two seven three eight two five five. Um, the Veterans also has a text line and a crisis text line, and the Trevor Lifeline also has a text. Line. Um, and then we have the ASU Crisis Helpline, which is 325-486-6345. This and our police department and counseling services numbers as well. Um, and then if you uh, are back home and you're not in the San Angelo area anymore and you're looking for a local resource um, for a mental health care provider, you can utilize um, psychologytoday.com. They have an awesome uh, search engine of where you can filter providers by if you're looking for a specific gender of counselor or a specific specialty or insurance provider. Um, we also have therapy assistance online available, which is TAO um, and Psych Hub. And then there are several YouTube videos, podcasts, online resources, everything <laughs> on the internet available. Um, there's so many um, awesome resources that are available right now for these feelings of anxiety and stress and worry. But awesome, thank you guys so much for attending. Um, Does anybody have questions. I totally forgot to add a Q&A slide, but <laughs> if you have any questions, you can either unmute yourself or ask it in the chat um, way.
Thank you, guys. Yeah, y'all are sweet. <laughs> it's a little nerve wracking getting up on here each week, especially because like when you're presenting, you can't see anybody else's like faces or anything like that. So I just feel like I'm talking to myself <laughs> alone in the room. <laughs> Definitely. All right, well, if there's no questions, then we'll go ahead and end the meeting. And um, we did this, so it will be put up onto Counseling Services YouTube um hopefully soon but yeah so y'all have a great rest of your week and good luck on your summer classes and if you need anything feel free to call counseling services thank you guys so much